17th of, of uh, April. No, it's the 13th of April. I knew that didn't sound right. And we seem to have avoided the storms that hit a lot of people over the last couple of days and especially last night. And we're grateful that uh, for that, but we're concerned at the same time for those who may have received some damage in, in various ways. I guess I want to start this morning with uh, a question. Has there ever been an event or a time in your life that started out bad or negative and then ended up good and positive. I think maybe all of us may have been that way. I, I think for the Tittle family, uh, 2021 was one of those. You know, but maybe since this is tax time, uh, maybe you filled out your tax form anticipating owing money and, and the IRS looked at it and discovered you had made a mistake and actually you're going to get a refund. Maybe you received a, a pretty negative diagnosis from the doctor concerning a health issue and it turned out everything was okay. I know a man who, who was like that. He had had three brain surgeries because of his trigeminal neuralgia. And there wasn't going to be anything else they could do about it. And then one day, and I don't think just by accident, he began to improve and he was healed. That's somewhat the tone of our Psalm for today. We're in Psalm 30 and, and at least a part of it has to do with opposites and and we'll note those uh, when we get when we get to them and it may point out for us that i don't know labeling something good or bad may not do us service Maybe we need to let the story play out. 
And maybe that good or bad thing, that, as we might call it, is only a stop along the way of the journey that God has put us on. There's one other question that, uh, that would, uh, I would ask before we get into, into this psalm. And that would be, do you think we tend, we tend, if we're not careful, to rely less on God when things are going quite well? When things are, are falling into place as far as we can see and what we think, that maybe we really use that time and don't come closer to God, but maybe move a little further away. I think even that is spoken to in this psalm today. And there, there's really a lot of things that, uh, that are spoken to in this psalm that we could uh, talk about this morning, but those are, those are the two areas that I'd like to share with you from this psalm and from scripture this morning as we talk about Psalm 30. So, uh, get your Bibles and let's look here for just a moment. And as usual, uh, we'll do our view from above, you might say, uh, of the psalm, and then we'll and then we'll read it together. I have this psalm that's that's really divided into four sections. It might it could possibly be three sections, but the first three verses. Uh, verses 1, 2, and 3 are a praise to God by David for previous deliverance. Then we go to verses 4 through 7 and this is a call for others to join David in praise to other, to in praise to God. You might say a bit of evangelism there. Verses 8, 9, and 10 seems to echo what David has prayed for in the past. And, and we've seen that in these psalms over and over again. And that's what seems to be happening here, ending in verse 12 with a, a word of praise and thanksgiving for God. And we've pointed out before that for the most part, almost every time, when David goes and pleads to God for relief in whatever situation that he has, finds himself in, that typically, typically that ends with turning to God in praise and thanksgiving, giving glory to God, as he does here. So let's read together this morning. The superscript on my psalm says, a psalm of David, a song at the dedication of the temple. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. Verse 1. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you. I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol, you have restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful. Be merciful to me, O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you 
forever. Well, let's note as we start this psalm, the superscript here for us, which says a psalm of David, a song at the dedication of the temple. Now, all of that is is kind of interesting because Solomon didn't, I mean, David didn't build the temple, right? It's Solomon, his son built that temple. And so David wasn't present at the dedication of that temple. The dedication of the temple is, is shared with us in 1 Kings um, chapter 8, basically, and into chapter 9. And Solomon has, has quite an extensive prayer to God at that dedication. And he, he gives praise and honor to God, and he's thankful that now God has a, a dwelling place. The city where God wanted to dwell, there Jerusalem, and now in the temple. And God is going to receive that in, in chapter 9 of 1 Kings. God's going to receive that and, and say he's happy to dwell. But in, in that prayer, Solomon acknowledges that in several ways, some tragedies may come upon us, and it will be because of our sin. And so he will add, when that happens, if the people return to you, God, so many times there in, in 1 Kings 8, if the people return to you, you will return your favor to them. And God, <laughs> previous to this, has already said that. He said that, uh, you know, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, et cetera, that he will, he will be a God of graciousness and mercy and, and blessings when, when, people, when his people are obedient to him and love him. But if the opposite happens and they rebel against him and sin, then they're going to see another side of God, his justice, his holiness, his punishment. And so Solomon's prayer is just really... Uh, a prayer that repeats the very things God has said. And, and God says, yes, that's what I'm going to do. And so in David's dedication to for the temple, maybe this is one he wrote prior to that. Because he does mention some of the, some of the things that, uh, that happened to him in his life. We've already noted in the previous Psalms, and we'll see them again that have come upon him and he's asked God for relief that he says, God, you're my refuge. And so, so maybe David did this earlier in anticipation of the temple and now saw, and now when the temple is dedicated, maybe this is going to be read. Of course, I've noted before that the superscriptions were really not part of the Psalm. They were added later, but there are those who, who have thought this out a bit, and this is this is the way they have titled this psalm. And it pretty much goes along with the prayer of dedication that Solomon made when the temple was dedicated. So first, there's there's praise for deliverance, and, da and David has done this before, right? And David, in previous psalms, has has acknowledged and praised God for his help in the past and you might remember that I have suggested that's something we need to do when we find ourselves in a distressful tragic chaotic situation in our lives is remind ourselves of when God has helped in the past and that helps us to rely on our trust in God that he's going to help again. And so that's always a good place to start. And here in this psalm, it's a good place to finish as, as David returns to that thought. At the very end of this psalm, it says, I'm going to, I'm going to praise you. I will not be silent. There's, there's nothing that happens. There's nothing that has happened. That's going to make me close my mouth. May more, maybe more correctly, my heart that would make me stop praising you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give thanks to you forever, he says. 
But in between those, the call for uh, the praise for deliverance and, and then his, his dedication to be thankful to God forever, he mentions several things. In the second section there, beginning in verse 4, and through that section, he, he calls for people to join him, to join him in praise. And going back to the dedication of the temple there in, in uh, 1 Kings, that's mentioned there too. In this prayer, Solomon say, and if, if foreigners, if those that are not of the Jews come and give thanks, give thanks at the temple to the God of the Jews, then receive that God, receive that thanksgiving. And of course, there was a way for, the, for those who were not Jews to proselyte themselves into the Jewish faith, though they could never obviously be a Jew by nationality. And so the, the outsider was always welcome. I, I love that, and don't you? <laughs> don't you? You know, sometimes we, we think, ourselves, think of ourselves maybe as a closed tribe, and, and that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Because as far as God is concerned, everyone is welcome into his family. And we need to make sure we're not doing anything that makes others feel excluded from that. There's always a way to God, and God loved us so much that he sent his son to be that way back to him. And so David calls for, uh, for others to, to join him, to join him in praise to God. And, and look at the contrast in, in this passage. His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Anger versus favor, a moment versus a lifetime. Weeping will tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping versus joy, night versus morning. And that that symbolism is so so alive for us, is it not? Because we think we think we're in darkness. We maybe feel like we're in darkness when when we're in turmoil, when we're when we're going through our life's issues and struggles and problems, and, and as he says, we weep, okay, because it it appears to be nighttime in our lives. But joy, joy comes in the morning. You can probably think of times when you have experienced that. And sometimes, literally, don't we go to sleep with the, our troubles and problems and issues on our lives and, and it keeps us awake for a while and, and, and then we finally go to sleep and we wake up in the morning and maybe things don't seem quite as bad as they were. Or we have enacted a plan to address them, prayed to God to help us in this, these situations. So weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I could, I could share where we are in our life right now with respect to our oldest daughter. We've talked about it before. Three days before Christmas last year, she came down with a, a, a stroke. She had a brain bleed. For over three months, she was either in the ICU, hospital, or therapy, rehab. And she finally got to go home last week. And that was a that was a struggle for us, her parents, and then her husband, and then her children. And there were some times that we thought she's not going to come out of this. Uh, but joy came in the morning, and she's doing very well. She still has a ways to go. We thank God that He has walked with her through this process. Well, here in verse 6, David says something very interesting. He says, As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. That goes to the question that I asked when we started. Sometimes when things seem to be going our way when maybe all our ducks are in a row, things are falling into place, 
Maybe we have plenty of money. Maybe our children are behaving themselves. And everything in life just seems to be okay. We found a good or better job. We got raised. And we think, okay, now we've got it. Now we've got it. And that's the very time that Satan can enter our heart and say, yeah, look what you did. Look what you did. Without thinking for a moment that we did nothing, but that God has walked with us in our lives and has blessed us and has put us where we are today in order to praise and honor him and bring others to him. And maybe sometimes God has to work in our lives to remind us of that. And so what was going so well for us at one point may begin to not go so well. You know, it reminds me so much of, of things on television. It's been this way forever. But typically on television, you don't hear much about God unless someone takes God's name in vain. Until things start to get bad. And then there may be a reference to God, you know, God help us, you know, God get us out of this. And what we always need to hold on to is that God is with us through it all. And we can turn to him as our source of relief, our, source, our refuge, because he's always been that. And he doesn't turn that on and off. Yes, there may be times in our lives when we need it more than we do at other times, but it's always been there. As David continues this psalm, he says, I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? So this is, uh, this is uh, what David has prayed before. We've seen these words. Uh, psalm 6 is, is one of those one of those places. So in the middle of this psalm that is uh, a dedication for the temple, okay, David maybe is, you know, is saying, you know, I want to be around to do that, uh, to dedicate your temple. But he's more than likely uh, speaking of the issues and problems and things that have, that have come, that has come into his life. And so he repeats what he said before in some of the other Psalms, and well said. And then, of course, having said that, he's going he's to have another section of some vivid contrast. You turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. So loose and clothed, sackcloth and gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Joy indeed does come in the morning. Jesus will say in John 16 to his disciples after he's said something they don't understand. He said something about you. I'm going to go away and you won't see me, but I'm going to come back and you will see me. And they're confused about that. And he says, there's going to there's gonna come a time when you will be weeping. But your weeping will be turned to joy because you're going to see me again. And that's right. Paul will say a similar thing uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 about sorrow being turned to joy at the appearance of Jesus. I think it's important that, that we not grip tightly onto the difficulties that we have in life, and we all have them, and we have had them, to the point that they stall us in our relationship with God. It just may be he's trying to get our attention. He, it just may be that he says, there's something else out there, okay? There's something else, and I need to help you get on that path. Sometimes that's how he works. But right now, 
if it's night time for you. Remember that joy comes in the morning.